Do you love Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove? Well, this might be a movie for you. 1959's The Mouse That Roared, made just a few years before Kubrick's very famous Cold War satire. This movie offered him a lot, a lot of visionary ideas of how to put that together. Let's take a look at why I think this is forgotten. a forgotten classic. This is number 12 in my series, The Mouse That Roared, coming up next. <laughs> Mouse of stars the great English comedian Peter Sellers in three very different roles, not unlike what he would do several times in his career, including in Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove, where he played three different characters. This is a political satire, a parody, and a farce. It's all three combined. It is a really interesting premise. In fact, if you like the premise I'm going to announce in just a second, I'm almost sure you will actually like this movie. Premise is an imaginary country, I think it's in the Alps, settled by the English a long, long time ago, named Fenwick, and which has an aristocratic structure, sort of like England, I suppose. It decides to go to war with the United States. They're a country of only 15 square kilometers. They have no army. They don't even, no one knows they exist almost, and yet they decide to go to the war with the U.S., circa 1959 or so. Why would they do this? Well, their chief export, their only export, wine, is being ripped off by a California winery. And so this country's exports, they lose all their money, and they want to get the U.S.'s attention. Also, they figure that any country, and this is historically true in terms of World War II, any country that goes to war with the United States and loses gets a ton of help and aid from the United States. So like the U.S. helped rebuild Germany or Japan or something like that. That's the idea that the Fenwickians have. And they're so backwards. They have an army of hunters who shoot crossbows and they have chainmail armor. They decide to send a few of these guys off to New York City to go surrender to the United States. Well, it just so happens this is where it gets completely ridiculous. When they show up in New York City, there's nobody there. Why? Because there's a nuclear air raid drill. Everyone's gone underground. And so they have the whole city to themselves. And it just so happens in New York City, well, one scientist is building a very important weapon, the weapon that goes beyond the H-bomb, the Q-bomb. And if the Finwickians get the Q-bomb, the ultimate weapon that can blow up whole continents, they might become the most powerful country in the world. Now, hopefully, as you can tell, I'm describing a post-war satire that's making fun of how nations relate to the United States, how weapons make nations powerful or not powerful. So it's not culture and it's not markets, it's weapons. If you own the H-bomb or the nuclear bombs, you are a great country. And here, what happens when the Finwickians get a hold of the ultimate bomb? You can only imagine, right? Even though they only have men with crossbows and they're only 15 square kilometers. This movie makes fun of Cold War era diplomacy. It makes fun of small countries and their place in the world vis-a-vis -vis huge countries like the Soviet Union at the time or the United States. It makes fun of England completely and entirely, England's backward ways, quote unquote, because this colony or this country is very much like England in silly ways. And it's got, as I said, Peter Sellers playing three different roles. He plays, I think, the Duchess of Fenwick, so cross-dressing role. He plays the Prime Minister, and he plays a, a guy who's basically the leader of this small band of men who go to New York City. Each of these wildly different roles, and it's all sort of fun. I have 12-year-old kids. They laughed a lot at this movie. I think you have to have a weird sort of Gulliver's Travels, Jonathan Swiftian sense of humor, because there's a lot of bite to this movie. In terms, it's got a dark core to it. Oftentimes, there's jokes about the bomb, this Q bomb, which is shaped like a football, going off, and all the jokes are about total nuclear annihilation. So it's trying to have fun with probably the darkest possibility that could happen at this time in 1959. But yet the jokes are farcical. I mean, you even have the Columbia icon at the beginning of the movie coming down off the stage because she's scared of a mouse. It's quite strange. You have a narrator who interrupts events. A la, I think later on, you got Monty Python, the Holy Grail, and the Monty Python guys must have seen this movie or movies like it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of our film. 
However, something very much like this could happen at any moment. We just thought we ought to prepare you and more or less put you in the mood. Thank you. And now back to our story. Typical sort of English sense of humor, wry and dry, with some very overt satire as well, and some ridiculous scenes. So all in all, it's a mixed bag of humor that may or may not hit, you know, your sense of humor, but I think it's got enough for everybody, especially the politically minded who might appreciate the ridiculous but poignant humor in this movie. And one of the movie's points is the nuclear arms race. Boy, wouldn't it be great if every country in the world joined up with the arms race so that they become the most powerful country and demand things or be in charge of different kinds of things or control markets or something like that. And one of the things being parried again, the dark core of this movie, maybe the Vatican City should get one. Maybe Andorra or Liechtenstein. Small countries in Asia or Africa. Everybody should get not just the H-bomb, but the Q-bomb. And that sort of idea here, really, I think there's a sinister thing going on about the Cold War, even some cynic dark cynicism about it entirely, which is kind of why I like the bite of this movie, and certainly why I think, I, I'm also no doubt that Stanley Kubrick watched this movie and sort of used some of it in his more better and tighter satire, uh, Dr. Strangelove. Have you seen this movie? What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments, and please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.